Welcome back to the Javits in the Big Apple, New York City. This is theCUBE's coverage of MongoDB World 2022. We're here for a full day of coverage. We're talking to customers, partners, executives, and analysts as well. Peter Ulander is here. He's the Chief Marketing Officer of MongoDB, and he's joined by Radhika Krishnan, who's the Chief Product Officer at Hitachi Ventara. Folks, Great. Welcome back to theCUBE, great Thanks to see you both again. Us. Good Thank to see you. Thank you, David, so, it's good to be back again. Peter, first time since, since 2019, you know, we've been doing a lot of these conferences and many of them, it's the first yep. time people have been out in yep. a physical event in Absolutely. three years, right. amazing. Yeah, I mean, after three years to come back here in our home, hometown of, uh, of New York uh, and get together with you know, a few thousand of our favorite customers, partners, uh, yeah analysts and such to have real good discussions around where we're taking the, the, the world with regards to our developer data platform. It's, it's been great. And a big part of that story, of course, is ecosystem and partnerships and rhetoric. I remember I was at uh, an event when the Hitachi announced its strategy and its, its name change and really try to understand why and, and the, what's behind that. And of course, Hitachi's a company that looks out over the long term. Um, and of course, it has to perform tactically, but it thinks about the future. So give us the update on what's new at Hitachi Ventara, especially as it relates to data. Sure thing, Dave. Um, you know, this, uh, uh, as many, many folks might be aware, you know, there's a very strong heritage that Hitachi has had in the data space, right? You know, by virtue of our, our products and our presence in the data storage market, uh, which dates back to many decades, right? And, and then on the industrial side, the parent company, Hitachi, has been heavily focused on the OT sector. And as you know, there is a pretty significant digital transformation underway in the OT arena, which is all being led by data. So if you look at our mission statement, for instance, it's actually engineering the data driven because we do believe that data is the fundamental platform that's going to drive that digital transformation irrespective of what industry you're in. So one of the themes that you guys both talk about is modernization, of course. I mean, you can, you can take a, cl a cloud, I remember Alan Nance, who was at the time, he was a CIO at Philips, he said, look, you can take a cloud workload, you can, you, or on-prem workload, stick it into the cloud, and lift it and shift it, and in your case, you could just put it on, run it on a, an RDBMS, but you're not going to affect the operational model. It's just your mess for less, if man. If you do that. It's your it's mess, your mess for, for, less. for less. And so the, he goes, you'll get a few, you know, you get a couple of zeros out of that, but if you want to have, you know, you know, in his case, billion dollar impact to the business, you, you have to modernize. So what does modernize mean to each of you? Maybe, yeah. Peter, you yeah, can Yeah, no, start. I'm happy to start. I, I, I think it comes down to, um, what's going on in the industry. I mean, we are truly moving from a world of data centers to centers of data. And these centers of data are happening further and further out along the network all the way down to the edges. And if you look at the transformation of infrastructure or, or, or software that has enabled us to get there, we've seen apps go from monoliths to microservices. We've seen compute go from physical to serverless. We've seen networking go from old wireline copper to you know, high powered 5G networks. They've all transformed. What's the one layer that hasn't completely transformed yet? Data. Right, so if we do see this world where things are getting further and further out, you've got to rethink your data architecture and how you basically support this move to modernization. And we feel that, you know, MongoDB with our with, with our partners, especially with Hitachi, yeah, we're best suited to really kind of uh, you know help with this transition for our customers as they move from data centers to centers of data. So, architecture um, and it, the failure. I will say this, and you tell me if you agree or not. A lot of the failures of, of sort of the big data architectures of today are there just, everything's in this monolithic database. You've got to go through a series of hyper-specialized professionals to get to the data. If you're a business individual, you're so frustrated because the market's changing faster than you can get answers. So you guys, I know, use this concept of, of data fabric. People talk about data mesh. So how do you think, Radhika, about modernization and the future of, of data, which by its very nature is distributed? Yeah, so Dave, you know, everybody talks about the hybrid cloud, right? And, and so the reality is, every one of our customers is having to you know, deal with data that's straddled across you know, on-prem as well as the public cloud, and, and many other places as well. And so you know, it becomes incredibly important that you have a fairly seamless framework that's relatively low friction, that allows you to go from the capture of the data, which could be happening at the edge, you know, it could be happening at the core, any number of places, 
all the way to publish, right? Which is ultimately what you want to do with data because data exists to de deliver insights, right? And, and therefore, you dramatically want to minimize the, the friction in the process. And that is exactly what we're attempting to do with our data fabric construct, right? You know, we're essentially saying, Customers don't have to worry about, you know, like you mentioned, you know, they may have federated data structures, architectures, data lakes, sitting in multiple locations. You know, how do you ensure that you're not having to, you know, develop custom code in order to, you know, drive the pipelines, in order to drive the, the data movement uh, from one, one location to the other and so forth. And so essentially what we're providing is a mechanism whereby they can be confident about the quality of the data at the end of the day, right? And, and, and this is so paramount. You know, every customer that I talk to is most worried about ensuring that they have data that, can, that is trustworthy. So this is a really important point because I've always felt like from a data quality standpoint, you, you know, you get the data engineers who might not have any business context trying to figure out the, the quality problem. Mm -hmm. If you can put the data responsibility in the hands of the the business owner who he or she has context, that maybe starts to solve this problem. There's some buts though. So infrastructure becomes an operational detail. Let's, let's hide that, don't worry about it's it. Right? Away, Figure right? it out, okay? Yeah. So the, let the business can run. But you need self-service infrastructure and you have to figure out how to have federated governance so that the right people can have access. So how do you guys think about that problem in the future? Because it's almost like this vision creates those two challenges. Oh, by the way, you got to get your organization behind it, right, because there's an organizational Indeed. construct as well. But, but those are, to me, wonderful opportunities, but they create you know, technology challenges. So how are you guys thinking about that and how are you working on it? Yeah, no, that's exa exactly right, Dave. You know, as, as we talk to data practitioners, the recurring theme that we keep hearing is, you know, there is just a lot of you know, use cases that require you to have deep understanding of data and requires you to have you know, that background in data sciences and so on, such as data governance um, and, and various other use cases. But ultimately, you know, the, the, the reason that data exists is to be able to drive those insights for the end customer, for the, you know, the domain expert, for the end user, and therefore it becomes incredibly important that you know, we be able to bridge that chasm that exists today between you know the data universe and the end customer, and uh, that is what we essentially are focused on by virtue of you know leaning into capabilities like publishing, right? Like um, you know self ad hoc reporting and 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 things that allow citizen data scientists to be able to take advantage of the the plethora of data that exists. Peter. This, I'm interested in this notion of IT and OT. Yep. Of course, Hitachi is a partner yep. you know, established in, in both. Talk about Mongo's position in, in thinking, because you've got on-prem customers, you've, you're running now across all clouds. Yep. You know, I call it super cloud, connecting all these things, but part of that is the edge. Yep. You, is Mongo running there? Can Mongo run there? Sort of a lightweight, version, how oh, do you absolutely. see that evolve, evolving? Absolutely. Give us so, some details So, there. So I, I, I think first and foremost, uh, we, we were born on-prem, obviously with the origins of um, uh, MongoDB. About five, a little over five years ago, we introduced Atlas, and today we run across 100 different availability zones around the globe, so we're pretty well covered there. The third bit that I think people miss is we also um, picked up a product called Realm. Realm is an embedded database for mobile devices, so if you think about uh, car companies, Toyota for example, building connected cars, they'll have Realm in the car for the telemetry, connects back into an Atlas system for the bigger uh, operational side of things. So there's this, this seamless um, kind of, uh, uh, or consistency that runs between data center to cloud to edge to device that MongoDB plays across all the way through. And then taking that to the next level, we talked about this before we sat down, um, we're also building in the security elements of that because obviously you not only have that data in rest and data in motion, but what happens when you have that data in use? And uh, announced, I think today, um, we, we purchased a little company, Aroki, uh, experts in encryption, some of the smartest security minds on the planet. And uh, today we introduced queryable encryption, which basically enables developers without any security background to be able to build um, searchable capabilities into their applications to access data and you know, do it in a way where the, the, the security rules and the privacy all remain constant. 
regardless of whether that developer or the end user actually knows how that works. This is a great example of you know, people talk about shift left, yep. uh, designing security in at, yep. you know, for the developer right from the start, not yep. as a bolt-on, that's a great example. Redica. And I'm actually going to ground that with an a, a real do, life yeah. customer example, if, if that's okay, Dave. So you know, we actually have a utility company in North Carolina mm -hmm. that's responsible for energy and water. And so you can imagine, I mean, you, you alluded to you know, the IOT use case, the industrial use case, and this particular customer has to contend with millions of sensors that are constantly streaming data back, right? And, and now think about the challenge that they were encountering. You know, they had all this data streaming in, in, in large quantities, and they were actually resident on numerous databases, right? And, and so they had this very real challenge of you know, getting to that quality data that I, data quality that I talked about earlier, as well, you know, they had this challenge of, you know, being able to consolidate all of it and, and, and make sense of it. And so that's where, you know, our partnership with MongoDB really paid off, where, you know, we were able to leverage Pentaho to integrate all of the data, have that be resident on MongoDB, yep. and now, you know, we're, 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 they're leveraging some of the data capabilities, the data fabric capabilities that we bring to the table to actually deliver meaningful insights to their customers. Now their customers are actually able to save on their electricity and water bills. Yeah. So, so great success story right there. So I love the business impact there, but also you mentioned Pentaho. I remember that acquisition was transformative for mm -hmm. Hitachi because it was the beginning of sort of your new, your new vector, which became Hitachi Ventaro. What is Lumada? Um, that's, I presume, the evolution of Pentaho. Could, you brought in organic. Uh, but added capabilities on top of that, bringing in your knowledge of, of IOT and OT? Explain what Lumata is. Yeah, no, that's a great question, uh, Dave. And I'll, I'll say this, you know, I mentioned this early on. We fundamentally believe that data is the backbone for all digital transformation. And, and so to that end, you know, Hitachi has actually been making a series of acquisitions you know, and as well as investing organically to build up these data capabilities. And so Pentaho, as you know, gives us some of that front-end capability in terms of integrations and so forth. And the Lumada platform, the umbrella brand name is, is really connoting, you know, everything that we do in the data space that allow customers to go through that, you know, to, to derive those meaningful insights, right? Lumada literally stands for illuminating data. And so, uh, you know, that's exactly what we do, irrespective of what vertical, what use case we're talking about. As you know very well, you know, Hitachi is very prominent and just about every vertical, we're in like 90% of the Fortune 500 customers across banking and financial, retail, telecom, and as, as you know very well, very, very strong in the industrial space as well. You know, it's interesting, and Peter, you and Radhika were both talking about this sort of edge model. Mm -hmm. And so if I understand it correctly, and maybe you could bring in sort of the IoT requirements as well. You know, you think about AI. Most of the AI that's done today is modeling in the cloud. But in the future, and as we're seeing this, it's, it's real-time inferencing at the edge. And it's massive amounts of data. But you're probably not, you're going to persist some, I'm hearing. Probably not going to persist all of it. Some of it's going to be throwaway. Uh, and then you're going to send some back to the cloud. I think mm -hmm. of EVs or, you, you know, uh, uh, a deer runs in front of the, the, the vehicle and they capture that. Okay, mm -hmm. send that back. Mm -hmm. um, and the, ma the amounts of data is just massive. Is that the right way to think about this new model? Is that going to require new architectures? And, and, and I'm hearing that Mongo fits in yeah. beautifully so, to that. So this is a little bit what we talked about earlier where you know, historically there have been three silos of data, whether it's a uh, classic system of record, system of engagement or, or system of intelligence, and they, they've, they've each operated independently, but as applications are pushing in further and further to the edge, and real time becomes more and more important, you need to be able to take all three types of workloads or, 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 or models, data models, and actually incorporate it into a single platform. That's the vision we have behind our uh, developer data platform. Um, and it enables us to handle those transactional, operational, and analytical workloads in real time, right? Um, one of the things that we've, we announced here this week was our, our columnar indexing, which enables some of that, you know, step into the analytics so that we can actually do in-app app, uh, analytics for those things that are not going back into the data warehouse or not going back into the cloud, real time happening with the application itself. As you add, this is interesting, is basically Mongo's becoming this all-in-one Database. As you add those capabilities, are you able to preserve, it's, it sounds like you're still focused on simplicity, yep. developer product, productivity. Are there trade-offs, as you add, does it, does it detract 
from those things or are you able to architecturally preserve those? I, and I think it comes down to how we're thinking through the use case and how, you know, what's going to be important for the developers. So if you look at the model today, the legacy model was let's put it all in one big monolith. We recognize that that doesn't work for everyone, but the counter to that was this explosion of niche databases, right? You go to certain cloud providers, you get to choose between 15 different databases for whatever workload you want. Time series here, graph here, uh, uh, in memory here. It becomes a, a, you know, a big mess uh, that is pushed back on the, on the company to glue back together and figure out how to work um, within those systems. We're focused on really kind of embracing the document model. We obviously believe that's a great general purpose model for all types of workloads. And then focusing in on not taking a full search platform that's doing everything from you know, log management all the way through in-app. We're optimizing for in-app experiences. We're optimizing analytics for in-app experiences. We're optimizing all of the different things we're doing for what the developer is trying to go accomplish. That helps us maintain consistency on the architectural design. It helps us maintain consistency in, in the model by which we're, we're uh, engaging with our customers. And I think it helps us innovate as quickly as we've been, been able to innovate. Great, thank you. Radhika, we'll give you the, the last word. We're seeing this convergence of function mm -hmm. in, the, in the data base, data, data models, but at the same time we're seeing the distribution of data. We're not, you're clearly not fighting that, you, you're embracing that. What does the future look like from Hitachi Ventara's standpoint over the next you know, half decade or even further out? So, you know, we're, we're trying to lean into what customers are trying to solve for, Dave, and, and so that fundamentally comes down to use cases and, and the approaches just made look dramatically different with, with every customer and every use case, right? And, and that's perfectly fine. We're leaning into those models, you know, whether that is uh, data residing on the edge or the core or the cloud, uh, we're leaning into it. And our intent really uh, is to ensure that we're providing that frictionless experience from end to end, mm -hmm. right? And, and you know, I'll give a couple of examples. We had uh, you know, this, this very large bank, you know, one of the top 10 banks here in the US that essentially had multiple data catalogs that they were using to you know, essentially sort through their metadata and make sense of all of this data that was coming into their systems. And we were able to essentially dramatically simplify it, you know, cut down on the amount of time that it takes to deliver insights to them, right? And, and it was like, you know, the metric shared was 600 percent improvement. And, and so this is the kind of thing that we're maniacally focused on is how do we deliver that quantifiable end customer improvement, right? Whether it's in terms of you know, shortening the amount to derive the insights, whether it's in terms of the number of data practitioners that they have to throw at a problem, the level of manual intervention that is required, so you know, we're automating everything. We're trying to build in a lot of security, as, as Peter talked about, that is a common goal for both sides, you know, where we're trying to address it through a combination of security solutions at varying ends of the spectrum. And then finally as well, delivering that resiliency and scale that is required because again, the one thing we know for sure that, that we can take for granted is data is exploding, right? And, and so you, know, you need that scale, you need that resiliency, you need for customers to feel like you know, there is high quality, it's not dirty, it's not dark, and it's something that they can rely upon. Yeah, if it's not trusted, they're not going to use it. The interesting thing about the partnership especially with Hitachi, is you're in, in so many different examples and use cases. You've got IT, you've got OT, you've got industrial, and so many different examples, and if, if Mongo can truly fit into all of those, uh, it's just the rocket ship's going to continue. Yeah. Peter Radica, thank you so much thank for coming you. back Appreciate on theCUBE. It's great to see you both. My pleasure. All right, keep it right there. This is Dave Vellante from the Javits Center in New York City at MongoDB World 2022. We'll be right back. <laughs>